need, so flip over. I'll put the names on purpose in here. Uh, try to convince that names are as important as adults. They're quite beautiful, uh, quite diverse. And uh, I would argue you can do serious uh, morphological or phylogenetic study with morphology if you don't study names, not just the adults and people. Uh, the reason for that, uh, names present some characters which are not visible or poorly visible in adults uh, or maybe even completely differently represented to adults uh, compared to the names. So all those examples which I have on the slides have certain features uh, which uh, has uh, uh, some different morphology, but those features are not present in adults. And, uh, let's see what uh, this one, for example, it's a guardian that uh, has strongly bilobed head and we know a guardian that normally have the, the, the adult just from it, but the feature is not present. So this is a people surveillance. It's also has by low head, probably not that much pronounced, uh, but again, it's by low head. Uh, enigmatic coloration of the name, uh, which is not present in adult. Uh, we have uh, certain uh, uh, appendages or extensions uh, present on the different parts of the body. Uh, on the head, abdomen, and thorax, uh, in this pupil uh, spine, single one, and this uh, delta circle line. Uh, we have uh, head appendages of different origin in the upper means, or five uh, appendages, like in this one or this one. We may have single appendage, we may have uh, two appendages, etc. We may have extremely flat and body shape, as in this lead line, uh, so this long uh, pattern of the towards the uh, guys. Uh, we have additional ketotoxy of the abdomen uh, in uh, the double spines present on the abdomen, but in some other groups and may present in the thorax and head as well. Uh, I presented shorter version of this in the one of the past meetings, but we will return to this. Uh, uh, head structure has quite important uh, features for understanding the relationship of uh, high-level taxa in deep hoppers. And uh, to understand uh, uh, the morphological structure of the head, there are two important boundaries uh, which need to be recognized. So we know that the head has dorsal surface, uh, ventral surface, but those are not morphologically, so those the topological uh, parts. But we have morphological parts like uh, uh, clipius, uh, divided in uh, post clipius and anticlipius in the Polokinarinka. And we have this suture which divides clipius from crons and the general uh, in all insects. Uh, in uh, some groups of Polokinarinka, this suture is well visible. In deep poopers, uh, we only can guess where this position of the suture is present. This is a small suture. Uh, uh, there are some markers for the suture. It's always uh, seen on the. Uh, it's always connected to tentorial pits, uh, uh, linked to tentorial arms on the side of the head, and it's also linked to the subchannel suture uh, on the sides of the head. Uh, in nymphs, uh, we also have uh, ecdysial line, or I call it also postfrontal suture, the line where the cuticle will break uh, during the ecdysis or molting uh, from. Uh, Instar to instar or from instar to adult. So it's always uh, represented like Y shape uh, split. It's a uh, start with formal suture and it uh, breaks into those two separate arms uh, uh, on the head. So we have uh, some markers uh, for the prongs with the green area, uh, which uh, supposed to have a serious in those groups of ordinary which has one. And uh, we have uh, two other series placed on the uh, uh, vertex. Uh, it could be on the dorsal side of the head, the uh, ventral side, but it's uh, related to the vertex. Um, and again, position of those which is a little bit different in different groups. And uh, again, there is some difference, uh, difference in opinion uh, how to call uh, different parts of the, uh, of the head structure. Uh, so this is uh, ground line I'm using. This is uh, more or less follows Anupri Kimiriano's interpretation, and I will come to that better later. Uh, Snodgrass didn't distinguish fronts and post fronts, according to uh, all structures fronts. 
and again, in deep corpus, there is no much distinction between these two because there is no a service. Uh, the court was uh, basically drawing a straight line between the uh, tutorial pits and uh, saying that this presumably is a border between uh, bronze and uh, papers. Uh, Hamilton's interpretation uh, making similarity to Burgoyd's, which has a uh, very small uh, uh, clipus suggesting that in deep corpus, actually, uh, the lower portion is uh, clipus, uh, the rest is uh, bronze. And Google of Kirk uh, lived with completely different interpretation, and she actually changed her opinion from 1991 paper to 2008 paper. Uh, again, I will discuss this in details. Uh, just uh, to make comparable structure of the head, uh, this is a programmorpha head. So we have very small papyrus uh, uh, in the lower part of the face. We have uh, fronts, uh, which has a series in some of the groups. Uh, and large portion of the face is actually, uh, uh, I would say, it's a post fronts. Uh, Another Pibiliano suggests a different terminology. Uh, they notice that the dorsal part of the head, like this uh, six species, has uh, different uh, cuticle structure, so they suggest a different origin of the basal and frontal part of the, of the head. So they come with the terminology uh, acrimitope for the frontal part. Uh, according that it's part of the larger middle uh, uh, area uh, and uh, and uh, cold carif as a base part of the of the dorsal side of the head. Again, uh, I don't find of this terminology because it's again it's a very specific to further morpha and doesn't correspond to any other insects, so I prefer to use terms. Uh, vertex and post fronts, which more similar to what we have in other insect groups. Uh, cicadas. Uh, cicadas are a different story. So basically, Glypheus uh, is huge, uh, so they switch to, to, to feeding uh, the xylus, and uh, muscles increase so much that they are pushing uh, fronts and post fronts to the dorsal side of the breast. Uh, similar story in Sarcopets, again, huge uh, Glypheus. Uh, and uh, fronts and post fronts to the side of the dorsal side of the head. Uh, interesting uh, part about sarcopoids, uh, uh, Nymphs has rounded uh, ground veins transition, while in adults, many of those has uh, corina along the anterior margin of the head. And we have a portion of the post uh, called dorsal plate embedded to the ground side, dorsal side of the head. And interestingly, there is nothing in nymphs, but there is whitish lines you can see in some species which potentially corresponds to this future corina which will be developed in adults, not present in the, in the nymph. Uh, Membraca idea, so we know that the, uh, we don't have a particular line dividing our clipus uh, and uh, uh, post prongs. Uh, but I would argue that uh, I can still predict the position of, the, of this line. It is an uh, epistemal suture uh, in the upper, so somewhere in this and the upper portion of the, of the face. And there are some indicators, like this Selenocephalo species uh, has whitish line exactly in this position and have small this triangle of depression, uh, which potentially corresponds to the fronts uh, of the upper. Uh, in uh, leaf hopper, uh, post fronts may be rich in dorsal side of the head that could be completely on the ventral side of the head. I will show some examples. And again, just for comparison, all four groups uh, of Cortinarinca, the gates are probably huge post clipus uh, with uh, fronts and post fronts always on the dorsal side, and Pulgaromorpha uh, uh, and Membracoidea. Is uh, clipus always restricted to the face, uh, never coming to the dorsal side of the head. And uh, post clipus or post prongs could be reaching the dorsal side of the head, or it could be restricted to the ventral side. Um, ju just a few examples. Uh, this is Eulofa with a split on the ventral side of the, of the head, on the face. Cicada uh, uh, with a broken cuticle, is wide shaped split, and medium osseruses are right here. Uh, line. Uh, this specimen actually has a stage of the whitish line exactly in the same position, which potential border between uh, uh, glipus and uh, uh, 
post from fronts and post fronts. So uh, we use term uh, front clippers because we don't know where this position is, but uh, in NIMS we can predict this position in at least in some of the process. Uh, some other important characters for the nimble morphology uh, development of the wing pads. Uh, and uh, from the starting from the third instar, you can predict what instar of the NIMS uh, based on the length of the four wing pads, uh, which are about half length of the combined length of the uh, uh, mes and metatorax, uh, almost reaching to the abysses of four, uh, four wing pads, uh, almost reaching abysses of the hind wing pads in this fourth instar, and uh, reaching abysses over even overlapping in the final instar. Gonapophysis, uh, um, which will develop in the male and female genitalia. Again, you can predict the uh, sex of, uh, of the inca of the nymph starting from the third instant, more reliably the fourth instant than the fifth instant. So in males, uh, so you have a split between gonapophysis about halfway, and uh, in females, uh, all the way through. So there are three pairs of gonapophysis in both sexes and females that will be developed in the ovipositor, uh, three valves, uh, and in males that will be developed in the uh, subgenital plates, uh, ediacus and style. Uh, there are some differences in the shape of the gonapophysis in different groups, uh, but those uh, not very useful character in general for species identification, but for, for high level, probably a little bit better. I don't have a good picture, but there is also an old view visible uh, here. Uh, one interesting uh, uh, thing about uh, NL tube and the NIMS, uh, it's a single segment. It, uh, it will be divided into two segments uh, when the NIMS will move uh, to adults. So basically predicting that that's a secondary structure, the division of the NL tube into two segments. Uh, Leg head attacks are very uh, important for identification, but in general, leg head attacks are uh, similar to the adult leg head attacks described by Roman Rakitov in uh, a lot of details. Yet, one important uh, feature to mention that uh, uh, tarsus of the uh, leg over knees is always two segmented, and again, three segmented tarsus we will see only in adult. Uh, I will briefly uh, go through different families and subfamilies of membrane there uh, to show you uh, the features of the of each group. So mere slope uh, family or sometimes uh, people interpret it as uh, super family uh, has uh, uh, very difficult to study morphology because uh, the nymphs even in the soil and the uh, body is heavily covered with the soil particles. Uh, but in general, uh, we have uh, this post clippers coming to the dorsal side of the fat. Uh, you can see this whitish line here in the fat. Uh, important uh, feature of this group uh, segmented antennae. So we have uh, segmented antennae in uh, nymphs and adults of cicadas, and uh, we have segmented antennae in nymphs of uh, sarcopus. But uh, sarcopus will have uh, unrated antennae in adults. Uh, the same is uh, Eurimelina is a group uh, defined by Chris, uh, which includes uh, uh, several tribes, including Pedosrini, uh, Australopagolaidini, and uh, Macrapsini. Uh, usually they have a rounded round face transition, uh, a cell on the face, uh, and uh, we have uh, invisible lines of postfrontal sutures also on the face. Probably one exception is uh, Austro-Fungaloides, a uh, small Australian group uh, which has uh, carina somewhere in the face, basically breaking uh, uh, the uh, frontoclipius and uh, dorsal and ventral sides. Uh, and again, some photographs. Urimela, Austro-Fungaloides, Tobia again. Ecclesia lines on the dorsal side, uh, but in general the, the head has the same structure as uh, other urim uh, lines. Uh, important feature of this group is also macrocity, as I said, macrocity may be present in the head, uh, thorax, and uh, abdomen. And 
your email lines, uh, micro CD present, uh, they present on everywhere on the body, including the uh, head and uh, doors. And not just the email lines, uh, all uh, leak overs from this uh, bigger lineage, uh, mega pal mines, all of mines, uh, and uh, few, few, few others. And again, you can see the difference in coloration, difference in the structure between uh, an ink and details. Macro signs uh, also play in the inside of the lines. lines. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm completely convinced about that, especially having that more deep over like uh, structure of the uh, macro sign names uh, of uh, open having a crest on the dorsal side of the abdomen, with sometimes with large keys. Uh, interesting to uh, think about this particular subfamily. Names are much easier to identify than adults even to the species level in my process. Uh, yeah. uh, head structure, uh, some macrop sign, names and adults, uh, beautiful photographs, <coughs> like from Germ and some others. Uh, Megaphalmini group, including Nagalians, uh, has a very similar head structure. Uh, head is rounded or uh, by load, uh, on the face, uh, split, uh, beautiful will split also on the face. Uh, um, and uh, you can say that the cuticle split on the face of the uh, leaf over nymphs when you see by load head. It's basically always correlated. If you have two lobes on the nymphs, it's always related that uh, post frontal suture on the face. Uh, there are a few, few exceptions, uh, but uh, in most cases, uh, this, is, uh, this is the case. Uh, some very enigmatic uh, medical minds, uh, Tripodolumini, has extremely long head, but again, uh, cuticle breaks on the face, uh, and basically the head will split into halves when they move uh, from one east to another. Uh, Megaphalmini, sense of speak, uh, tribe, uh, not very good defined tribe, uh, so we had some discussion this please, uh, and uh, I don't know what is the final decision, if it will stay or not. But uh, the, the group was defined by double set of the coronia on the head, it's the same on adults and the nymphs, uh, but again, the feature may be a little bit artificial. Uh, uh, small small group, uh, Evansiarini, uh, single genus, three species uh, from uh, Chile and Thailand in the middle of the Pacific. Uh, again, it's uh, soil living uh, insects. Uh, you don't see much in the morphology because the you know, entire body covered with the particles. And I didn't have much material on that. I didn't even want to clean, clean the, in the insects to, to see that. But again, it's uh, in general the same uh, body structure except for this uh, hammer shaped head. Uh, in general, uh, the nymphs is pretty uh, fit to the groups pretty well. Uh, and again, some photographs, Agarians, uh, the typical one with rounded head uh, and some unusual forms with bilobed head, with elongated head, etc. Uh, yellow pine, uh, same general lineage. Uh, group of lymph covers with a, a post-frontal suture on the face, uh, so cuticle breaks on the face. Uh, the difference of this group is on the dorsal side of the head. Uh, in this group, I don't see much of the indication where uh, epistemal sutures align between the clippers and post-frontal scooby would only predict because in all lymph covers it's about the same position. Uh, one unusual tribe, so for guardians, uh, has apparently differently uh, developed head. It's also by low, but a uh, small portion of the uh, frontal clippers uh, reach and dorsal side of the head. So you can see on the photograph here. Uh, my explanation for this one is not the same uh, anterior carina as in other pulopines. It's probably enlarged antenna ledges in those groups which form anterior margin. And again, uh, Australian group uh, and, uh, from uh, Southern Africa, the Ferrellinia group is extremely, extremely long head, but again, you can see the cuticle will break here on the face again. Or uh, uh, so it's a head will split and go forward when the, the nymph molds. And again, some of the beautiful photographs, uh, nymph adult uh, from 
here, some sample line, and if you can score the running and the results go down here, and another species for the same group. Tiflo Sabinia, there was a long debate where Tiflo Sabinia related to, and again, based on the Nimple morphology a long time ago, I suggested that the group should belong to the same general lineage with arrhythmia lines, uh, megaton lines, solar lines. And the reason for that is that basically, again, split of the cuticle, uh, cuticle split on the face. Uh, and uh, in some names, you can also see a quite low fat structure, which is also a good indication for this group. Plus, again, another feature of this bigger lineage of hip is presence of the macrocyte, and not on the abdomen, but also on the uh, fat and uh, forest. If you have macrocyte, of course, some of the names do not have. Again, some beautiful photographs uh, from Chris, from here. Um, Aya signs. Aya signs uh, has a cuticle split uh, reaching uh, the tip of the fat. So there is a carina, and with the carina is present, the cuticle uh, split will reach uh, the apex of the fat. This is the Christine. If uh, you can definitely see the line, and again, you see a whitish line here, and I explain this whitish line is the uh, border between uh, apios and postprobes. Uh, Scarini, another group, uh, uh, but again, uh, split of the cuticle will be a basically crazy anterior margin of the head. Uh, interesting feature about this group the present position of the anterior. The position much more close to the anterior margin of the head, and places of antennae are visible from the dorsal side. From the dorsal side. Um, one of the features of this group described in the past uh, unusual uh, structure of the CT covering the body, not just micro CT, but uh, a lot of CT covering the body, and they are not uh, typical CT which are pointed to the uh, towards the apex of the cedars. Those cedars are usually uh, extended to the apex of the cedars, so a little bit unusual. But again, I can say that it's probably more typical for ISM, but it's not unique uh, character for this particular subfamily. And again, some beautiful photographs. Uh, uh, based on the, it's hard to say based on the position of the uh, ecclesial line, what is uh, the relationship of this group. But, since they have macrocydia again on the abdomen and uh, thorax and the head, I would say that this group probably more related to a pure and medical lineage. And again, usually you don't see much of the macrocydia because the uh, regular city is very long, about the same length as macrocydia, but in this particular species, uh, macrocydia covers black. So you can, you can see that they are forming longitudinal rows and region. Uh, okay. Aphrodine, Aphrodine, another group, uh, which again, uh, it is a line just tracing on the area margin of the fat. So this is the diagram, and this is a photograph. Uh, and this is Aphrodis, uh, uh, sample is another tribe of the same group. Uh, they have more rounded fat, but again, uh, it's, uh, uh, you can see that this is a position where the critical dog breaks. And Again, this name has quite ni nice white line on the breast, indicating that they break between the uh, lipus and post lipus, or uh, post ones. Uh, Sagmatian is uh, treated as separate subfamily by India Pemerton, uh, but uh, again, unpublished data potentially more closely related to Aphrodite. Uh, and again, it's a very big uh, group uh, from Australian region, uh, and uh, again, body covered with debris, uh, and very interesting uh, morphology. But in general, morphology of the nymphs is very similar to a certain cephalus nymph. Uh, that could be flattened, it could be a more rounded, uh, different species. I have icing nymph for several species, they look a little bit different. Different, they represent a different lineage of uh, leaf poppers. 
And that entire lineage uh, included several other families that will have uh, that uh, cuticle breaks on the always on the dorsal side of the head. And very often they have anterior parina uh, before in the front of this uh, skin. Uh, the same is uh, tribe Dendrinia. Dendrinia has one unique feature. They actually are the only uh, tribe which lost uh, the diesel line, uh, so the cuticle will break in the random position, but it's the only group of leaf poppers like this. Um, one of the things here don't belong uh, to Dendrinia for a uh, recent change uh, by that guy. Um, uh, here moved the uh, this uh, Stenocatinia tribe with another group previously placed in the Drinia, uh, he put it in Tartacina. And if you look at the needs of Tartacina, it looks quite different from my point of view. So we still uh, look at another Stenocatai nymph. Uh, uh, yeah. In general, they have uh, definitely a lot of similarities between those two, uh, but I'm not conv completely convinced that. Uh, uh, this belongs to, to the same subfamily. So radians in general the same uh, head structure, uh, the cuticle breaks on the dorsal side. Uh, the, some unique features are uh, very large eyes and there are additional longitudinal perineum uh, and crown looks like elevated above the eye level. The head is artificially similar to a uh, head and some beautiful photographs uh, the internet. Probably it's quite a meaning, I don't know. Evocantine in general has similar head structure, uh, again, it is a line on the dorsal side. Uh, some uh, don't have much time, so there are like uh, longitudinal robust of macrocity, but in all the stages, macrocity is restricted to the abdomen only. There is no macrocity on the uh, head or torus. New Solidians, uh, again, very similar. I'll just quickly uh, go through the images. Uh, Macrocity on the thorax only. And again, uh, recent phylogenetic analysis suggests that Barton, Bartonini could be actually a tribe of New Solidians. Very, uh, very similar uh, nipple morphology. Erminini is a group. Uh, represented by a single species, but we discovered that most likely Armenia closely related to Patismata Parina, uh, probably just a single stuff family based to uh, two tribes, but Armenia would have a uh, reference for the name that's all the name. That beautiful photographs. Sigadarina, rounded head, uh, traditionally considered that was clear to the uh, region dorsal side of the head, but that's not true. Uh, so this, this line represents that actual uh, break between uh, post pons and uh, <coughs> post -clipus. And we have portion of the head on the dorsal side represented by post fronts. And uh, this line is interesting. This is not morphological line. It's line this line suggests that the secondary lines uh, originated from the group of leaf poppers with flat head. So this lines only represent ancestral uh, anterior parina of the head, which get lost in single the lines. Probably a switch from the cliptic life uh, to more free view. Um, this group is very interesting. Proponian one tribe, which has this long appendage on the head, not always present in adults. And uh, the origin of this appendage is uh, quite, quite interesting. I lost uh, one of the slide images, but that doesn't matter. This uh, long appendage could be represented only the fronts, uh, small uh, triangular structure, but in this group it's getting extremely huge. Uh, some beautiful photographs. It is signed, another group of big poppers, a uh, very small group, and also has very elongated uh, head appendage, very similar to second lines, probably the same origin. But again, just those two subfamilies which has this appendage in the head. Some photographs of the Achilles signs. Neonian, uh, small group, uh, probably the same group because uh, critical breaks on the dorsal side of the head. There's nothing more special about this group, just 
wherever it was in the small size email. There was also a call line that will just show the photographs, but the same critical breaks on the dorsal side. Uh, where did that browser open that in terms of the head? Could be rounded, could be a flat head, it could be this carina. Uh, carina of the position is different uh, in different, uh, so it's looked like the evolution of people where the head get flattened and rounded multiple times during the evolution. And each time that get flattened, uh, the position of the carina is different. So it's just, you get so much when you look at the news. Again, a lot of photographs very different, but there is some similarities between them, of course. <coughs> and of course, uh, understanding the news can uh, help understand uh, uh, who is it. So we have uh, certain news uh, in, the, in the number, which could be potentially identified. Several people ask me if I'm presenting something on the on database. I don't know, just show that if Somebody didn't see the new website, so all the data coming here. And now it's through a collaborative project because the database is online database, so we have people joining the group. And if somebody wants to contribute something to the website, distribution, images, anything.